Okay, so um, my actual reaction to the video, probably the best thing I can do is actually read the comment that I had previously put on uh, the page but have removed because I'm removing all my comments because, you know, it's, I, didn't, I didn't leave the comments so that your page has content. I left the comment as, well, I created the, the comment for my own content. Um, so, I mean, if you want to eliminate my ability to, to create content, um, I'm not just going to leave the content there for free. You don't get a gift like that, sorry. Um, so, um, this is my comment um, on that video. It's actually a useful short because it explores the situation from Russia's defensive priorities, which has been their dominant concern since before Stalin. Uh, so much Western media focuses on this bluntly comical idea of Russia as an offensive power, trying to conquer the world. Uh, it, it's also useful in the sense that it really draws the connection between modern Russia and historical Rome. This foreign policy is quintessentially Byzantine, and, and so are the consequences. Um, perpetual suspicion of imperial treachery. I, I think that in the broader historical perspective, Western civilization has yet to truly break its way out of the division of the Roman Empire. I, I know this is very abstract, but it's something I've drawn attention to before, and I really think there's a lot of truth to it. Um, it's tied into the American historical psyche, and to the foundation of the nation itself. This idea of America is the new Rome, but it's sort of typically American in its early its lack of scope. You know, the typical American, you know, cluelessness, right? Um, London was the actual new Rome. Washington is in many ways the new Constantinople, but it's recursive, right? As, as much as the American Revolution was a civil war within the British Empire, rather than an actual revolution, and it wasn't a revolution in any meaningful way, it was, a, you know, a war between factions of the elite. That's what you call a civil war, not a revolution. Um, and it was one that ended with Washington as the new center of the British Empire, the new Roman Empire. That's only the Western half of the story. Um, you know, and typical American-centric, you know, perspectives of things. And this isn't racial, this is nationalistic. Black people are worse than white people when it comes to this. Um, th th this idea of, of you know, the America being the center of the world, right? Um, but there's, a, there's another half of Rome, uh, the eastern half. It was the half that lasted longer um, and had a probably, well, unquestionably a larger um, uh, footprint on, on, on the way that history unfolded. Um, and the eastern half of the story sees Moscow as the new Constantinople. That's uh, the continuation of the eastern uh, sphere of Roman civilization. And it sees the Russian Empire as the continuation of the Byzantine sphere. So then when you understand that, you have to ask the question of what the Cold War really was. And what was it? Well, it was a civil war in the Roman Empire where you have the Byzantine half in Moscow fighting against, you know, the new papal empire in Washington. As history unfolds, conflicts localized in space and time open themselves up to these broader interpretations. You know, these details fade and what's left is the broader narrative. And when this story is told to children on distant planets, it seems very unlikely to me that any meaningful separation will occur over what we call a modern era. The whole thing will coalesce. You know, Moscow and Washington, that conflict, conflict between Constantinople and Rome, or between the Pope and the Patriarch, and deep between Greece and Persia. Um, this will become intertwined into a single epic struggle um, for control over Western Roman civilization. And that is a good um, way to understand what's in that video. Um, the video talks a little bit about um, American strategies um, to uh, it's a big temperature difference walking out of there um, I, I need to do my dishes still um, but um, the video talked a little bit about um, American strategies um, to contain Russia um, and it's all very true um, but but what it was really more about it was it was about Russian um, ways to counteract the containment strategies. Um, and it's all about um, creating divide and conquer around um, its border regions. Um, you know, I mean, the, the name Ukraine itself means border area. Um, and that's not, that's not a quintessentially Russian thing. The Franks did the same thing. Um, I think Austria is one of the... 
Or was Austria the, the Roman border? The Franks had a few, and the Romans had a few. If you, if you look at a map of Europe, half of the um, areas are, are named after border. Like, like, like half of the countries mean border region. Um, you know, your eastern border or western border or something like that. It's just in the different languages. Um, that's the actual reality of it. Um, but, uh, like, and so, so, I mean, like, Ukraine means, like, like, like southern border region. Um, and it's, uh, you know, uh, the, the Caucasus is another area that they have to um, have broken up Central Asia and, to a lesser extent, the Baltics. Um, although, the Baltics are very important to the West because it's a military base. Um, they're, they're really just an annoyance to Russia. There's no real strategic value in them other than ensuring that they don't fall into the wrong hands sort of thing. Um, because the West sees it as so important, um, a lot of these narratives get confused about Russia's actual you know, strategic reaction to the Baltic areas. Um, from the Russian perspective, and I showed you on the map, um, it's Poland. It's more important. That's the area that they really need to control. Um, and, and that's the, uh, you know, their kind of focus. But, I mean, that's, that's what they have to do, and, and that's imperial strategy. It's exactly what the Byzantines had to do. Uh, I mean, the Byzantines were, I mean, it, it was, for the last, you know, thousand years, it was almost reduced just to a city, uh, the city of Constantinople, which itself was hard to take. But everywhere else around it was, you know, in, in chaos, right? And, and, they, and they were constantly trying to say, okay, so there's this one tribe over here, and we need to find a way to get that tribe to fight this tribe to prevent this tribe over here from forming an alliance with that one. And, and the whole thing was just a giant divide and, and conquer strategy. Um, and that's what I'm drawing attention to um, in, in that comment, is um, the fact that if you look at the foreign policies, there's huge levels of parallel. If you look at the culture, there's huge levels of parallel. The, the connection between Rome and Byzantium is far stronger than, than the connection between Rome and anything, between Rome and Paris, or Rome and, and London, or Rome and Washington. Um, uh, even if you just ignore the fact that there wasn't a Reformation in, in, in the East, just the cultural carry-ons are, are so strong. And this is why I, I pointed a few times that... I, I don't think that there will be a lasting peace in that part of the world until Russia is able to conquer Turkey. Um, I say it like that. Um, that's not really what I mean. What I mean is, is for the Greek areas. I mean, I, I, Turkey should not exist. Okay, I'm sorry if you're a Turk. Um, if you're a Turk and you know your own history, you should really agree with me. Um, is your country has no historical it, it, basis. You really shouldn't exist. Um, you know, you, Turkey has always been a purely colonial power. It came in out of people migrating from somewhere else, um, set up on top of a different civilization. Um, it, it really has very little in common with the people around it. Um, everybody around there still thinks they're invaders. Um, and, and every part of Turkey, there is a repressed indigenous population. So... Um, you know, as you move from one end of Turkey to the other, you've got Kurds and Armenians, and then you've got Greeks on the other side. Um, you know, you've got Syrians and Assyrians in the middle. There's really not, um, I don't want to say that, that, that there isn't anywhere in Turkey where there's a majority Turkish ethnic group, because that would be false, obviously. But the idea of, uh, of, of Turkey existing is, um, it, it's an error in history. It's an the, the mere concept of a Turkish state is an injustice of history. And, um, like I say, if you're Turkish, I'm sorry, but you should agree with me. Because like, if, you, if you have a good sense of justice, you should agree that, you know, you shouldn't exist. I'm sorry. Um, you know, there's... Uh, there's a Turkish homeland in Central Asia. Um, you know, 
the way Stalin did this might have been a little harsh. Uh, you know, grabbing people by the ear and dragging them across the plateau. Uh, but I think he was right. Um, Turks have no reason. They, they, they have no they have no place west of the Caspian like this. Um, you know, and I, I mean, I, I'm all for, you know, integrated societies and everything. Um, people getting along and, and all these kinds of things. But um, the idea of ethnic Turkish, you know, majority groups or, you know, the Turkish uh, nation states west of the Caspian is, is not... Um, uh, an idea that has any historical justification. It, it's pure colonialism. Utter colonialism. Um, and uh, I know that that's going to upset people that, that want to look at history in, in racial terms, um, but that's the wrong way to look at history. The right way to look at history um, is in terms of um, uh, you know power structures. You know things are things that set off migrations. You know are you know, climate change, or, you know, this tribe is invading that one, or whatever. And what happened in Eastern Europe is that a Turkish ethnic group colonized a white group. Um, and you have a situation where you have an, uh, a Turkish overclass and a white underclass. Um, and you can refuse to see that if you want, but it's there. It's been there for a thousand years. Um, not not more than a thousand years, but uh, about a thousand years. And um, the right thing to do is to is to overthrow it, um, and that's true. In it, it's largely already happened in Russia. You know, the process of dismantling the Turkish state um, is, is to end the process of demongolization of the area. Um, it didn't really totally reverse itself. Um, you know, the, the Russians were able. Or the Slavs, more broadly speaking, were largely able to, you know, push the invaders out. Um, it never happened in Turkey. And that's uh, a part of history that still needs to be done. As the Turks need to be sent home. Um, they've been there too long. And all they've caused is misery. And like I say, I'm sorry, but if you're Turkish, then you should agree with me. Um, point I'm coming back to is this idea of uh, of the Russians liberating Constantinople, um, and and bringing it back to um, kind of a Greek rule. Um, again, you, you won't hear me talk like this very often, but in this particular context, um, there's a there's a historical process at work um, that might actually be inevitable. Um, and I don't. I don't see how you really get a peaceful solution in this area until you're able to reconstruct, um, you know, you know, this Eastern um, concept of, of 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 civilization that was um, destroyed um, by 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 invading barbarians. Um, So that's what um, the, the video was was largely focusing on is is Russia's need to um, defend itself, um, and I, I've lost my train of thought. But um, it, it is a video that's worth watching. Um, as I pointed out, um, just to um, have a better concept uh, of what Russia is thinking um, uh, as it's um, going through these maneuvers. Um, I'm not saying you shouldn't listen to your TV at all. Um, it, it's useful, at the very least, to understand what it is that they want you to think. Um, or, you know, to be maybe a little bit more fair to understand their perspective, right? Um, Washington has a perspective um, to suggest that it's... <laughs> to suggest that Washington's perspective is of no consequence would be um, rather delusional. Um, their, their, their perspective is of great consequence, of course. Uh, but um, it, 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 it's skewed. Um, you know, the, 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 the perspective that you get from media is not um, without bias. And if you want to actually understand things properly, you need to look at both sides of things. 
um, and this video does a very good job of um, explaining the historical um, needs of Russia to um, uh, control the areas around it um, for, for its own defensive purposes. Um, and I was, uh, I was making the connection um, of that um, uh, to the Byzantine Empire, to the uh, eastern and um, arguably real um, side of Rome. Uh, one other thing I wanted to point out there um, is that um, the methods that are discussed in this video and assigned to um, Russia, um, and which, as I pointed out, have parallels um, in Byzantine history, um, are also utilized by the Americans in the region. Um, so there, there's one point where they explain that um, the Russians are, you know, pushing up for a civil war in Azerbaijan in order to create a conflict between Azerbaijan and Armenia. Um, that, 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 that keeps them, you know, fighting with each other, and prevents them from uniting, and, you know, all these sorts of things. It works out into the, their interests. The Americans do the same thing. Um, you know, a lot of people... Let me, re let me state this carefully. It is well understood that the Islamic State has received significant levels of funding uh, from the United States. Um, it's the same kind of divide and conquer, right? Um, a lot of people have a hard time getting their heads around this, you know, it's like, but I thought we were propping up Iraq, so why are we giving money to these people that are fighting the people that we're supporting and and, and you know that they, they want to take this sort of like you know like black and white binary perception of things um they they, they want um you know uh, these good and right narratives um sort of, sort of right and wrong narratives um where uh, you know you're fighting um They they want to assign a purpose to history, um, but that's not the way America has ever. That's not the way any empire has ever functioned. Um, and America is. Um, it's not. It's not the engineer of these policies. Uh, the British did it, um, and really, um, the way that the Americans um, carry out their um, divide and conquer is um, descended directly from the way the British did, because that's what the American Empire is, is it's the new British Empire. There wasn't, you know, I mean, that's, that's what happened after World War II, is that the, the Americans took over. Um, that's what the American Revolution was about. It was a civil war for primacy in the British Empire. Um, we still live within a British Empire. We've changed the name of it, we've changed the locus of it, but it's still the same basic British Empire. Um, and, and, and the leaders carry out the same strategies. Um, but, but we don't talk about this. We, we don't talk about how the Americans are starting a war in Syria in order to keep Iraq and Syria fighting against each other um, you know, to prevent, uh, you know, Iran from taking over the area. We don't, we don't talk about these sorts of things, um, despite the fact that they are happening. We talk about them openly when, when Russia does it. We talk about them openly when we're talking about history books. So when the Byzantines did it, or when, um, the British Empire did it. But, 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 but we don't see um, this as it's happening in front of us in real time. Um, it, it's even less that we're blind to it, um, and just that we're, um, we don't want to see it. Um, I think we all know, you know, we, we can, we can all look at the evidence and we can all see, hey, wait a second. And I think that we all realize it. It's just, we don't, we don't acknowledge it. Um, in fact, I might even go so far as to suggest that the divide and conquer that the Americans have in the Middle East is probably the single most complicated. I mean, the only thing I can think of that comes even close is, like I say, Byzantine foreign policy. 
Uh, and then the, the very word itself, Byzantine, means complicated, <laughs> right? Um, a complicated military strategy. That's if you, if you look up Byzantine in the dictionary, you will see that. Even though, I mean, it's, it's an ethnic term for the... Uh, today they call it Istanbul, the meeting place. It, it, was, an ish, it, it was before that called Constantinople, um, after the Emperor Constantine. But before that, it was called Byzantium. Um, so this is uh, where, the, where, the, where the term actually comes from. It was the initial Greek name for the city of, of, of Constantinople slash Istanbul. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the way the Americans have it set up, you know, with the... They realize that there's four major powers that are historical. And in fact, they may even be being a little too generous. Um, certainly Turkey is a historical power. Certainly Saudi Arabia, in the sense of it being you know, the Arabs, um, that's a historical power. And certainly Iran is a historical power. Um, I think it's been a long time since Egypt was a historical power. Um, even if you know, various incarnations of other powers have um, set up in Egypt kind of thing. But, the, but, but they've got these four... four on very similar cultures um, fighting with each other, um, you know, s cut in the middle, um, jockeying with each other for, for influence. They're constantly, you know, finding ways to split them apart, open them up, um, and then they've got Israel sitting right in the middle, um, you know, kind of helping them at the same at the same time as they're, they're it, it's it's such a, such a balancing act. Um, that you really have to go back to, to, to a Roman um, period to, to, to find anything close to that. I mean, like, what, what the British did in Afghanistan is just, it's nothing, it's not even close, right? Um, even what the British were doing in, in the Middle East is just, it's, um, I, I, you know, with the stronger your hegemony is, the uh, more sophisticated your tactics need to become. I, I suppose that um, that's going to be a linear correlate, but... Um, so anyway, so so when when you see these things, you know, discussed, you know, it, it kind of um, provides an undertone of, of Russia being this kind of like, you know, sinister force. Um, it's it's just how empires work. Um, you could say all empires are sinister. Sure, I'm an anarchist. I'll, I'll agree that all state that, that statism is fundamentally evil. Um, however. You want to um, interpret the concept of evil, um, but um, Russia is not, you know, inherently more so, um, and, and really their their tactics are um, crude um, in comparison to uh, the the real empire uh, in, in the world. Um, but um, this this is something that's interesting. Um, uh, well, I expect it'll probably show up in um, more than one of the videos that I react to. Um, this is this is part one. Um, I'll do a part two. Um, well, it's it's the second part of the reaction to part one of the series. Um, I'll, I'll do a part two um, as I um, watch it.